the chairman will be running a little late tonight. He's stuck in traffic on the on the sawmill. Uh, all things given, I think he'd rather be here than on a sawmill. But, uh, Peter, would you call the roll, please? Sure. Robert King. Here. I'm here. Mary Cronin. Here. Diane Cervello. Here. Carla Moreno. Joan Mead. Here. Uh, Mary Comstock. Ed Torian. Here. Paul Swenson. Here. Okay. Uh, would you read the minutes from the last meeting? Sure. Um, our last meeting was held on Monday, April the 14th, here in this room. And at that time, the commission uh, discussed and accepted the minutes from the March 24th meeting. The commission also heard input from the public. Uh, Joel Yurch, uh, Lynn Waller, Margaret Mitchell, and Al Robinson all spoke to address the commission. The commission heard from Dennis Alpern, the planning director, who discussed uh, the combining of the planning and zoning commissions. And he pointed out that it was recommended by Danbury's plan of development that the two commissions would be combined. Um, and we had an extended discussion with him about that. Uh, the commission also, after listening to Dennis Alpern, had a discussion with its counsel, Eric Gottschalk, regarding language for Charter Section 7-10 and Section 1-2 in the proposed preamble. Uh, Mr. Gotchuk pointed out at that time there is no official map showing the meets and bounds of the city of Danbury. Uh, the commission voted on the following matters. We unanimously approved the addition of language to uh, section 7-10 of the charter. We, um, most of the commission with the exception of Cervello, opposed um, voted in favor of language for section 1-4. Um, uh, we unanimously agreed to change the language in section 3-2 regarding the first organizational meeting of the council after an election. The commission discussed getting input on planning and zoning from the chairman of the planning and zoning commissions. I was assigned to contact the city clerk um, and treasurer as to their future availability and the commission discussed having the draft language the preamble. Um, and the commission decided to uh, the commission decided to discuss Danbury, I'm sorry, I don't think we, we discussed language regarding entities that might have been governed by um, special legislative act. That was the minutes of our meeting. Are there any changes to the minutes? If not, uh, motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Seconded? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So done. Uh, let us welcome the public to the meeting. Uh, would anybody care to address the commissioners? Joe? Thanks, Bob. Joel, you're right. 44 Olympic Drive, Danbury. Uh, just two quick topics. Uh, I won't belabor what I said before. Uh, again, I would encourage you to reopen the um, uh, bond issues to bonds that uh, uh, can be issued by the, the uh, administration with only council approval. Uh, you have modified the amount to $2.5 million from the $500,000, but as we have uh, subsequently seen that, uh, in fact, uh, where I have been less concerned that <coughs> had always been administered as an annual cap, uh, it obviously is no longer the case, as five times that was uh, put through in the current uh, budget proposal. So I would just make a suggestion, a way to remedy that perhaps would just be the insertion of two words right after the $2.5 million that you changed to say per annum. Makes it clear it's an annual cap, not per issue, not per project, not if, when or where per annum. Anything over that needs to go to public referendum because it is a multi-year commitment, not something you can solve by changing councils and administrations next year or the year after. Uh, regarding the planning and zoning proposal um, put forth by the planning department, only a couple of comments uh, as I previously testified as opposed to that for a number of reasons. If you haven't had an opportunity to speak to other commissioners on either planning or zoning, I would encourage you to please do that. I only spoke to one on each commission uh, in the interim. Uh, one was a planning commissioner, I mean a, a zoning commissioner, and I explained what was going on and what their opinion was, and the response was nowhere, no way in expletive deleted. The, um, 
a conversation with uh, one of the uh, commissioners on the planning commission. Again, just ask, you know, this is probably coming. What do you think about it? After some discussion, I didn't get a clear one way or the other about the combination, but there was a very clear thing about appointment versus election. I personally think you could not even consider combining those into one commission with so much power and not having the electorate have a voice in that. But the response I got from that individual was, if it goes to election though, I'm done. I've been there, I've done that, I'm tired of the pettiness of politics, and I just thought all of the years, the experience in that one individual commissioner, gone. And I got to thinking about the rest of the people on the planning commission. Myself excluded, if you look at the composition of the current planning commission, there are decades of experience in land use management in the city of Danbury. And I got to thinking of who these individuals are that give of their time every month, sometimes until the wee hours. Uh, and I can't think of one of them that would actually be interested in running for an office. Campaigning in this town, he's right, it's a, it's a petty process. It's an expensive process if you really want to get elected, and it's a laborious process. Um, I think it would be a terrible loss to this town to, to lose individuals like our own the planning commission or the ones that have been there for, for years and years. I think my, my not being there, would the loss would be minimal, but there is a lot of experience there that um, it would just be gone. Uh, and as uh, final in, there was some comment in testimony from the planning uh, director about the combination of the two commissions being approved by all of the commissions or on both commissions. I would just like to leave you a little food for thought. We pr approve plans all the time on these commissions, but there are elements of those plans that don't, we don't like. But the over plan, yes. What was approved by the votes of those commissions was not de facto the combination of these two commissions. That was an element within the plan of development for the overall, that was approved. And I can see everyone voting for that as a whole. But talk to those commissioners and feel, see if they really feel that about combining those two commissions. An element of that plan is not the same as voting for the overall plan. So again, I would urge you, do not combine these two commissions. Thank you. Any questions? Anyone else wish to address the commission? Sure. I too want to um, talk to you about the bonding. <clears throat> I still would like you to open it up again and put a cap on it of some sort, um, realizing that a cap whether it's a two and a half million and you put a cap on it. Uh, it can still go higher than that in any individual year because the mayor can then bring it to the public for referendum, which is how we've worked all this time so that the public is involved in each issue and has an idea of what is going to go forward instead of just <clears throat> two and a half million and not allowing the public to see what's going on. If it's two and a half million per project or per item or however you choose to leave the wording, a lot of times the public will have no idea what we're paying for and we're paying for it into the future and forever, which bothers me. So I like the idea of the public being involved and voting at a referendum and it, it can happen. It has happened in the past when things are important enough. To me, the things that are on the capital budget sometimes are put there to die. They don't really want to do them, so they just keep putting them there and pushing it off. Sometimes their wishes, as they said, this is the wants, the needs, and the wishes of the city departments. Um, and maybe we shouldn't be funding wishes, especially in tight budget years, uh, so that I, even though it's as high as it is, it may not necessarily need to be that high. Any mayor at any time could bond for any amount on this thing, and they choose not to. So uh, that's not the public's fault. That's not why it got as big as it did. We have hardly ever, in my tenure in Danbury, voted down a referendum issue. So I don't imagine we're going to start in any hurry either. 
as for the planning and zoning, I still don't want to see the two of them go together. And although it was stated people did not speak out against it at the plan of development when they were voting on that and the public hearing, I did. I do not want to see it put together. I really think it's the wrong thing to do for the city of Danbury. I think the more opportunities the public has to find out about an issue, as well as come and address an issue, helps the public. And I personally think that's most important. That's what government is here for. They're, they're running the city for the public and for the people. And for the whatever, I am not worried about, and I probably shouldn't say because I'm on camera, I'm not worried about commissioners, and I'm not worried about city staff doing a job. That's what they're paid for, not the commissioners, the city staff. You need to really allow the public to know. Um, the trash transfer public hearing that was filling that chamber every single time uh, with people that were there to speak only found out about it about three weeks or, or three sessions into it in order to fill it because it wasn't in the newspaper. If, if you were not an abutting property owner, you didn't even know about it, but it could affect all of our lives. Other people in the city didn't know, didn't like it. Some of the folks from the hospital came and spoke against it. They wouldn't have known about it had it not been running for a fair amount of time. If it runs before planning and then gets publications, and if it runs before zoning, you're liable to catch it at one time or another. If you put the two commissions together, you're not going to have that opportunity. Thank you for letting me address you. Thank you, Lynn. Are there any questions? Comments? Are there any other speakers? Mr. Chairman, would you like to get up as a member of the public and address the commission? <laughs> We're very happy to see you made it through the traffic. <laughs> Stuck in traffic, kids. Thank you. Are you guys worried about me? Tremendously. I got a phone call that there was a bloodless coup going on. I just wanted to stop yeah, we were going to extend your term. <laughs> Do you have this? Uh, yeah, I think I do. Okay. Do you want to address it? Yes. You can address this. Yes. Are you? I was waiting for everyone else. Yeah, if oh. everyone else has, then yeah. by all means. Um, if you can take one and pass sure. them down. One of the issues that was raised at the last meeting and uh, discussed with some extent was how long these additional meetings would last if we combined the two commissions. So what we did was we took a, a survey of all the meetings that were held from April 1st of last year to May 31st of this year. And this is what uh, this shows you um, to a, uh, a quarter of an hour. Uh, the uh, Planning Commission in, in that 12 month period had 20 meetings, the Zoning Commission had 13. The median uh, length for the meetings for the Planning Commission was two and a quarter hours and for the Zoning Commission was half an hour because they missed a lot of meetings. So the median, uh, if you had to do together, uh, would have been uh, two hours, uh, two and three quarter hours. And then we figured out the mean as well, although I prefer the median in this case because it was out the extremes. <coughs> Mr. Elfram, is this yeah. is this typical? I mean, was this at the time when there was development was slowing in Danbury over the last year? I would think this is typical. Okay. It does include the two whoppers that we had, for example, um, for the transfer station. Those will okay. be four-hour um, marathons for the planning commission in, uh, Jan in December and January. Dennis, on the quote, two whoppers in December and mm -hmm. January. Was there more than one item on the agenda? Oh, yeah. yeah. Would, if we spread out the scheduling on some of these, would that take away some <coughs> of the concerns about yeah, people was, not being able to mm -hmm. speak on nights when there's, you know, certainly some items, I think, coming before the commissions are going to be more controversial and more of a public reaction than perhaps some others. Yeah, I was going to mention that. 
Uh, we do have a certain latitude, um, not total latitude. We obviously can't push back public hearings you know, by two months or three months. We have to act on it and stay within the time periods of the uh, neighboring legislation. But we typically have at least enough to maybe move something from one meeting to the next meeting. And in fact, that's what we do. We do that when we see a particular heavy meeting coming up and we can move something up. Certainly anything that uh, the city is proposing can be moved. Uh, you also will save a little bit of time, I don't want to belabor it, but a little bit of time because you won't have referrals from one commission to the other. Mm -hmm. I guess that saves a little bit of time. Yeah, there seems to be a concern that, you know, we've heard and it is the public access to the to the meetings in terms of speaking since they run so late that many people would leave before they had an opportunity to address you know, either of these commissions and uh, I thought perhaps a, you know, there may be some way of scheduling around that. Yeah, as you, as you may know, um, on the uh, October 3rd Planning Commission and then the October 9th when those are, we, we combine those two, mm -hmm. um, they came up to a five and a quarter hours but the following meeting, there was only an hour. So yeah, you could possibly lose some stuff up. The problem with the transfer station was, uh, in my opinion, was nobody anticipated a two-hour presentation by the applicant. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we had a lot of comments from the public, but a two-hour application is um, uh, atypical. Is there a time limit set for presenters to present their plan to the, no. to the commission? There is not. No. Uh, when in scheduling this, let me come back to that for a minute. Does your office, or are you responsible for the scheduling or is the each commission responsible for their own? In practical terms, yes. If we want to move stuff, we get in touch with the chairman. Okay. So you And we office. always go over the, um, particularly with planning because of the hearings, we go over the agenda with the chairman. Thank you. Okay. Um, one other thing I have. And by the way, one more correction. Um, this is not a proposal for me, it's from the Planning Commission. They're the ones who adopted the plan of conservation and development. And I'm going to give this, uh, uh, because it's, it's somewhat voluminous, I'm going to give this to your secretary. These are minutes of all the meetings we could find when this was discussed. Um, and we have the Common Council, the Planning Commission, which had several meetings, the Zoning Commission, um, and uh, HEPCO. Um, the uh, Common Council made a motion to endorse the plan um, on uh, November 1st. Their, excuse me, their November 2001 meeting, uh, which was passed unanimously. Um, the reason I'm not gonna go through all this is that much of this has nothing to do with the topic you have before you. Um, there were comments, well, as they reviewed this, they set up a committee of the whole on August 25th it came up. They simply asked questions. They said uh, there was uh, an opinion given that we should only combine the planning and zoning commissions if they're elected officials. There was a concern that too much power would be placed in the mayor's hands. Um, and I commented that's certainly possible. The combination would require charter change. The details of the change would be developed by charter revision commission. Common Council reviews any change before it goes to public referendum. <coughs> um, then they asked what are the benefits of combining the two, and the answers I gave there are the same answers I gave to you. Could you review those? Because several members of the Commission weren't here last meeting. Yeah, in fact, I have copies of my uh, I have Your submission. I yeah, have extra copies. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, planning for future growth and development. This was my response. Planning for the future growth and development of the city requires, <coughs> at the very least, coordinated and consistent policies from city government. We shouldn't say one thing and do another. The recommendation reads, 
combine the planning and zoning commissions as provided for by law to enhance coordination between the land use policies of the city and the zoning regulations. And then I quoted to them the section from the planning studies that you have in, in the report. The planning commission uh, adopted the plan uh, with amendments that they had recommended or told us to make, I should say. Um, in January 31st, excuse me, now uh, February 6, 2002, and it was passed unanimously. Um, and I have copies of previous meetings that they held. Uh, they held a public hearing on December 6th. Um, then Waller spoke. Um, 83 Highland Avenue. Praise Mr. Alpern and the plan. That must have been a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually read it, sir. You called one of the few. <laughs> uh, she was at a HEPCO meeting where he presented the plans. They thought it was the best they'd ever seen and suggested they haven't seen it. And suggested it should be a model for smaller towns. She was against merging the planning and zoning commissions. Don't get too excited. <laughs> if the positions are appointed, uh, for it would create an imbalance of power. Should be elected if it has to be done. Uh, and I don't know if there are any other comments I have from planning. Uh, the zoning commission uh, sends, a, and what you have is, a, which I gave, is a memo from the chairman of zoning, uh, Ted Haddad, to Joe Justina, who was the chairman of the planning commission at the time, um, approving the plan regarding the draft copy of the Planning Conservation Development Zoning Commission is in favor of moving it forward to a public hearing stage for the review process. We support general terms and major outlines of the plan and believe it will make a large contribution to the future of the city. The motion was made by Mr. Finaldi, who's now chair of the Planning Commission, by the way, and seconded and uh, passed unanimously. And then I have a letter from HECO uh, as well endorses the plan. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, Dennis, the concerns that we're hearing is if we combine these two commissions, we have the potential of losing a lot of experience in the planning. Is there any way that we could go about structuring this new organization that you could think of that would give us a combination of experience making sure that perhaps some of those people are on the board that have this experience and yet um, have a portion of it elected? Um, Your recommendation is elected, I believe, right? Yeah. Um, you could probably phase it in, I would think. Um, it might be a little cumbersome, but say the first election you might have some, um, uh, some the mayor might uh, or the chair and co-chair of the planning commission might be retained for the first, uh, first uh, series. Um, the other way, I mean, I think you could probably do that um, because, yeah, I'm concerned about it too. But I don't want to. Uh, I wouldn't want to hold up basic structural changes uh, because of individuals who may not last. Uh, forever into the future. <laughs> well, I'm you, thinking more you, of other continuity. Words, I'm thinking of continuity. Yeah. The people will, you know, come and go as, as, exactly. as, as, as time uh, goes on. But mm -hmm. I think we've, we had some continuity on this. I think that would be important. Do you agree? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the way it was structured the first year, you were like five members for four years, I uh, put it for a, uh, um, a four-year term and two and four for a two-year term, I believe. You could make those appointments. Could we have a board split of elected officials and appointed officials? I would think for the first until the until the second biennial. Election. If it would work that way, would we have a 
an ongoing board consisting of both appointed officials and elected officials. And we would have a balance of uh, appointments by the mayor confirmed by the common council, which would provide perhaps some continuity. And we would have elected officials serving on the board, which serves at the interest of, of uh, the community as well. The community have a say in that. In that. Could you do it? 7-19, I don't know of any town studies, <clears throat> but 7-193 gives the Charter Revision Commission the authority to, uh, to craft the election, appointment, and organization of a combined uh, planning and zoning commission. Um, it's, if, if it's something that you choose to do or explore further, we can do that. Um, but that language in, in the state statutes in 7-193, which you have a copy of, seems pretty broad to me. So legally we could do it. You know, as a lawyer, I, I'm just opposed to giving blanket statements without doing <laughs> just I mean, excess yes. uh, research. <laughs> well stated. <laughs> could we do it with a handout? <laughs> we, we could have a handout. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 Bob, can, we, can you rephrase this? Let's rephrase the subject so we, we're clear on what we're talking about. Is, mm -hmm. is, is how do you, what, what is our power to craft how members of this combined commission would be selected, whether they be elected or appointed. Is that a combination of both? Or a combination of both. Right. I, I, I think the combination might answer the continuity, Peter. That's what I was okay. trying to reach for. And the elective would serve as the, you know, uh, public input to, to the process as well. Uh, you know, I, I see certain benefits from what you pointed out yeah. with combining them. I mean, the, the knowledge is there. But I'm a I must admit, along that same line, I'm a little confused that if both commissions are currently uh, given communications about the agenda and the, from your office, reports and recommendations from your office, you know, I, I, I can't understand why one doesn't know what the other is doing. And uh, that troubles me a little bit. And, I, and I've and i thought about this over the past few weeks, and I think I just don't understand the process, to be quite frank. Yeah, Dr. Cronin. That's, that's where I think we're at, before we can even start talking about structures and whether we can find something to restructure and make, create something. I think we need to have a, a clear understanding of what the operations of both are. And I think we mentioned that last session, would it not be, and I think you and I had talked about this, would it not be a, a good idea for us or some of the members of the commission to, you know, visit the group or get more information in some fashion so that we have a clear understanding of how both these commissions actually work and operate. And one of the things we talked about was the communication between the two was poor. So if it's a communication issue, that might be solved easier if we knew how they operate in the beginning. And then maybe that communication could be part of the restructure or structure that we create. So I think we're kind of like jumping the gun to think of a structure if we don't really understand, you know, the pieces that we need to work with. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I think it does make sense. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're doing fine. Except. Go ahead. Except yeah. that. They're, they both do two separate things. So even if one hears what the other's doing, it doesn't mean that they're involved in that. Right. Nor does it mean that they can go to those meetings, and because unfortunately, because of my law, they can't go to those meetings and say, we think this is a dumb thing to do. Planning can't go to a zoning meeting? Individuals cannot. What about them coming to us? Individuals because they're commissioners cannot, or? Right. Okay. All right. So but, then the question would be, how then can we get more? Okay. Here, I can if I could take the floor for just a second, a couple of pros. One is it'll it'll increase the coordination with zoning. You talked about that. The zoning doesn't seem to quite get what planning has in mind. Some some of the things they do look like it's not quite translating what planning 
had hoped. Yeah, I don't want to dump on the zoning. Yeah, commission. that's it's probably said more negatively than certainly yeah. you said it and more negatively than I meant it. It's just that somehow we're getting the sense that there's a miscommunication that sometimes the planning plans aren't quite fulfilled when it comes down to the zoning decision. Is that accurate? Under well, the current setup. I well I think that um, one deals with policy in terms of setting up a plan. Right. The other deals with regulatory changes to zoning. Mm -hmm. The Planning Commission spent a lot more time on the plan of development than any other body did. Although I should say the council held several meetings on this. Um, so you're not you couldn't anticipate that the Zoning Commission would understand all the details of that plan. <coughs> okay. I mean, it's just, it, it wasn't their document. Yeah, okay. And one of the examples you gave us was you're trying to hang on to light industrial land, yeah. and yet with zoning, we're kind of giving it away to big box stores. Well, we've done that. You, right, so which isn't necessarily an advantage to Danbury, but, but so one of the ideas is we'll have better coordination. Second pro was that it would expedite the, peti the petition process because we wouldn't have the 30, if something gets referred back to the planning commission, there's a 35 day review period. Is that by statute or by Connecticut statute? So, so once it goes back to planning, there's no way of speeding that up. That's not fixable with the common council changing the way we do business. Okay, so those were the two pros that I heard. I don't know if there were more. On the con side at the last meeting, what I heard was if we did this, it would pro it could, especially if it's appointed, put too much power in the hands of the mayor. Um, expediting the process that is a con that is good in some ways is also a, a negative in other ways because the public may not hear about these things going through, which is what people talked about tonight. So expediting the process is good most of the time, but could be bad. Can I respond to that? Yes. There would be absolutely no difference. Okay. Because the combined commission still would have to go through the same process of notification <laughs> for public hearings, for proposals coming before it, as the Planning Commission alone has to do now. That same process has to be fulfilled, okay. whether they're combined or something. Okay, and, and there would be not one less public hearing for no. any, right? That We understood that correctly last time. Okay, so we're expediting the process. Maybe it's a, certainly a positive in many ways and maybe a little bit of a negative. Um, one of the cons, it. Well, I understand you just answered that, but I don't, what I'm hearing is people are saying, I think I may miss it in the newspaper the first time, but catch it the, the second time. It'll be the same process. But for you, I'll take that off same, my, exactly. I'll take that off my negative okay. list. Um, <laughs> one of the cons of the present system is the political parties have a lot of trouble filling the ballot. So not only do most people not know who their council members are, they certainly have no idea who's on the Zoning Commission or the Zoning Board of Appeals. And I've been asked probably 600 times to use my name in one of those slots because by the time you get down to the end, the parties just have trouble filling in those. And this would help that in, in some way, shape, or form, I imagine. Are there other advantages that I haven't listed or other negatives to, to doing this? Well. Um, the other advantage is that everybody sees the whole process, yeah. understands the whole process. Which, which means now the zoning people are now part of writing the plan. Is yeah. that? Mm -hmm. And they would have the time, and because they've got access to your staff, they would then have the expertise sure. to understand what's Let's going on. Just for that hypothetically, that the first one comes on, it's elected. And you happen to get five people who were on the zoning commission and four people who were on the planning commission. Okay. Um, well, the planners are going to know all about site plan review, special exceptions, and all of that. The zoning commissioner is going to know about what it takes to rezone land and to consider amendments to the zoning regulations. So first, <coughs> it's going to be they're going to be able to coach one another because each one brings some strengths. 
in, in 10 years from now, everyone's going to have exactly. that body of knowledge because they'll have yeah, experience all. on both sides of that. And that can be done by elective people. It's not so onerous that it's, an, it's going to be a burden. Well, I, haven't, I don't think we've had any trouble filling the zoning commission since I've been here. I mean, it seems like we're yeah. it, we're taking, how many people are on planning and, and the zoning commission now? There's nine? There's on, nine regular on zoning, and there's five regular on planning, and each has three alternates. Okay, so we're going to drop from 14 down to maybe nine, it's depending nine on what. Plus probably three. Well, I'd propose three alternates. Okay. All right. Well, you've. And there's no way of doing this coordination with, it seems to me we're just trying to coordinate and communicate, exactly. and I'm not quite getting my arms around why we want to make this change, if that's the only that was, accomplishment. That's my yeah, I, exactly. well, I think that's a why huge we That's a huge, okay. In my opinion. All right, good. Anybody else have any other questions? Would you consider the, the current system broke? No. You just see advantages of? I'm trying to improve the current system. Okay. By me, I mean the Planning Commission well, they yeah. adopted the plan in 2002. And I want to make a distinction there that this is, was adopted by the Planning Commission. There was no one that I would call on the Zoning Commission at the time or um, on Common Council that said, that said that they were just totally opposed to combining the commission. Mm -hmm. It did uh, generate some discussion. But uh, at the end of the day, no one was supposed to buy the call. And certainly, um, we were never directed to delete that. Okay. Yes, Dr. Crum. Does, does that leave us with why can't that piece you're looking for, the communication collaboration, occur without a charter change? I think that's where I'm getting. Good question. No. Good. 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 I can't get beyond It's not just a matter of communication. It's a matter of power. <coughs> it's a matter of power. At the end of the day, it's a matter of power. The Zoning Commission has the power to amend the regulations however they wish, regardless of what the Planning Commission may recommend. Yes, you did mention that. Okay. That helps. Any other questions or concerns? Do we feel we need to speak to people on zoning to get their input or other people on the planning commission to, before before you would feel that we can have a, an informed discussion? Okay. Good. I think I, we're a little slow here. <laughs> so we apologize, but we, we do want, we do want to get it right and. Um, I think a lot of us don't have a lot of experience on zoning and oh, on planning, so as a result, we're... we're it is complicated. Yeah. Uh, I grant you, uh, I've been here 20 years prior to coming to Danbury, I worked in another state, and you didn't have a zoning commission, you just had a planning commission. Interesting. Um, and a lot of other states are like that, too. Okay. You don't have duels. Okay. Probably what we're going to do is try to hear from a few more people that are intimately involved in the process just so we can make sure we get it right and then we'll have a discussion and, and move this ahead. Okay. I think moving with caution is a great idea. Uh, last meeting I suggested we perhaps might want to call somebody from the user side, uh, one of the land use attorneys or somebody who has appeared before the commissions um, to hear input from them. Um, as well as a commissioner. Yeah. You know, w w one of our disadvantages is that we're not a, we're not in office. We don't have city staff, mm -hmm. so we don't really know who to go get. But we will try to dig into that, and Eric, maybe you can help us with that. And, and we will try to talk to some people that would like to come talk to us. I think Eric also had indicated somebody from academia. You had a was just thinking aloud. You know, make some suggestions to you. Yeah. If you choose to go that direction, well, I'd be happy to make contacts there too. We don't have a budget. We don't want to run up city billables or whatever. But we'd like to get some data. In. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate your pro bono efforts at our fire feeder. All right, this week, last week. Okay, this week. Anybody? So, so we're going to get on plan. 
Yeah. Some planning and zoning commissioners. Anyone else have any other ideas or show, we'll talk about it after the, the meeting since it's not really part of our public session. Okay. Well, go ahead. No, Peter. No, that's okay. No, I want to hear it now. No, I, I sent emails to the various, uh, when I finally was able to track down the uh, commission email addresses uh, to the various commissioners. Um, I have spoken to different uh, local attorneys, uh, but that's just me speaking to people. and. Mm -hmm. Um, no one voiced a strong opinion one way or the other. Uh, I haven't had any real responses from any of the emails. I invited them to come to any one of our meetings and I think even provide either written or some kind of input. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that'll, that they haven't had that long enough to, to think about that. Yeah. Uh, but, I, but I think that uh, this is an issue that at, at some point, political people in Danbury in 2001 looked at very seriously, they addressed, and they made a recommendation for, for this to be combined. And we, we have to be mindful of that. Um, and uh, we're really just going to change some rules around that are in our charter. Not much more than that. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I think our goal is. Okay. Good point. Done. Maybe we could um, invite some people from neighboring towns that have the combined um, commissions to see how it works for them, or would that be appropriate? Like, I think okay. Ridgefield has combined, or? You know, Don't, you know Diane, maybe it's because it, some of this is related to my business. I don't know if our commission really has an understanding of how people get in front of a zoning commission or what the zoning commission does, despite the fact we listen to Dennis. Or necessarily, I don't know how many of our members here understand what the planning commission does, uh, you know, in any order. And maybe that's why we're so uncomfortable about talking about this. So uh, maybe I should invite somebody to explain from, I guess, the point was the user's view of when they go to planning or when they go to zoning. Mm -hmm. And I think if, if any of us know is that, people, is that an accurate? Is that an accurate? You know, that's my sense of, yeah. of, this, of the yeah. commission. I think we want. You're not comfortable with what either commission does. Yes. I think, Are we I free think, to attend the meetings and, and just yes. watch to see what goes I think, on? Or? Sure, you can as a member of the public. Absolutely. Um, Okay, Rick, if, if you can get a subpoena power, I'll bring in anybody that wants. <laughs> I don't think you'll need to strong arm people, or just a friendly phone call. Probably okay, do. okay, that's what we'll do then. Let's Thanks. Okay. Good. Um, just one other comment. Yes. Um, I don't. I want to make sure it's clear that uh, this proposal um, was not meant to criticize the planning or the zoning commission and how they you know, did their did their part. It was to improve the function of both. Okay. Sounds good. Is anyone making a motion on this, or shall we move on with the agenda items? I don't know if we need a motion on this. We're just going to do it, right? No, I agree. And that, but I didn't know whether people were ready to do it. Then, next thing on our agenda. The commission will review some language prepared by Eric Gottschalk, its counsel. Well, this is a short uh, portion of the program. On the table, you will find some language that I uh, provide to you that reflects the action that took last time. And that's the only handout I have. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe more next month. This was it. Now, we did have a, a proposal from Commissioner Kim concerning language in Chapter 1 relating to the a characterization of government as being a, a strong mayor form of government with a town and council. And, and I had an exchange of, um, of emails with, uh, with Bob, and the gist of which was that I wasn't sure what to write, uh, and that in any event, it might more appropriately be placed in chapters three and four, dealing with the mayor and the common council when we get to those. However, um, you know, we can do whatever you like. And I think Bob, Bob's response was he wanted to give it some more thought. Okay. Actually, some of the preamble examples that I um, looked at yes. had a description of, of, like a brief description of the form of government right in the preamble, and that might be a better place for it. Okay. And did you, you have preambles yes. that we were going to look at? Yes, I have. I, I, that may answer this. So we can, this issue. Mm -hmm. 
we need to pay, approve this? Or no, this, this is what, is what, what, what you did. I tried to. Peter, I read yours. It was Lincoln esque. Huh? It was Lincoln esque. Did you get these preambles? Yes, I got this it is if you did what you just did. Yes. Oh, we already yes. have these. These were for Diana. Diana. Okay. Do you have an extra thing? No, I'm not going to give you this to ridicule it. Computer there is a free printer also. And then it's not what it's printed. In the model charter. Oh. I don't know. I don't know. Lovely. They like the model charter mentioned it also? Yeah, this is the model charter preamble. I didn't make copies of it. To establish, keep calling. Mm -hmm. To establish. I think in the first sentence the word have should be here. Or here have, adopted. have adopted. Have adopted. I don't know what I want to put it there. To establish. To establish. Don't worry, we're going we're gonna to correct it. We're correcting all the grammar as we go along. Never do anything on your pilot. <laughs> <laughs> and drop the A, providing cost effective. <laughs> what? We need something short. You want something short? I like all those. No, no, no. I think it's pretty good. Place I think it's like pretty rest. nice. <laughs> you like it? I like this. <laughs> it's great. Did you, you want to know it's waterberries? You don't want to know where I wrote it. <laughs> That's, yeah, the only question no, is... No, we don't want to know that. If you don't, you wrote it while on a train on the back of an envelope. Peter, this <laughs> Peter. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I wrote that in court. And the only thing it's missing, you potentially, is... Check? We have spell check. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we well, need well, I would do spell check. check. It's grammar <laughs> check. Grammar check. Catholic school kid. That's me. Hold on. Actually, English teacher. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> this is the grammar checker. The only thing I think, Peter, you think. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. We're done. Go ahead. Just super do you think it would be a good idea to put in where it says form of local government, bringing in this, um, where was this, Diane? It was in one of these. In the New Britain, it says, um, establishes a representative democracy of, and balance of power comprised of a mayor and a chief executive and the common council as a legislative body. And there's another one that just goes into... Um, executive and legislative body without actually identifying them. But I, I think that if we wanted to, you know, describe our form of government, we should say that we have a mayor and a common council. Right. Yeah, I kind of but like we also this. have that already in the charter. It's under elections. It's under a different section. Yeah, it's, it's under, under elections, section 1415, yeah. yeah. whatever. It already and states that. It's pet city culture. Yeah. So how do you want to do it, guys? Just, I'd like I, I kind of like to bring this up in the preamble. I think it would be so another rewrite and an email. No, just it would be uh, where you have a form of local government. It, would, it, it establishes a representation of democracy and a balance of power comprised of a mayor as the chief executive and the common council as a legislative body. Okay. Do you want to bring that back to us next week and we'll take a look at it? Next is, is that plagiarizing? Are we allowed to do that? Because <laughs> that's taking it directly from the New Britain. Well, I we think what we're doing is using Peter's <laughs> preamble and just he wants to just take this section. Yes. Okay, I can give him my notes. Here, right here. It's where he has that. Who do we have? We have this. The man in the alley. Fine. Further work. Do Does that make sense to you? We should all take a shot at it. Hmm? He wants us all to take a shot at it. Peter. Does that make sense to you? And if you write it, yes. I'd be, I'd be happy to take your 
Mm -hmm. right, and add that sentence to it and, and, and email it back to you for your approval. Thank you. So you can be, we can be Thomas Jefferson to his St. Madam. Peter, John we're right. all going to email that input to you, and then you can shorten it all one little bit. Okay. Are we all comfortable with it? No. The question's been asked. Is everyone comfortable with the one that Peter had written? Yes. In concept, I am. Yeah. Okay. There's some changes that I would There's grammar suggest. changes. Yeah. Be well, I, take out, I would take out the word local because I don't think, and the word premier, I don't know what that means. So, okay. Those are two if you read this, Paul, where I underlined, and we insert that in that local government area. So here's, would you be comfortable with that? I don't know what it means. I probably want to leave this out and just take the word local. That's all. Okay. I mean, I don't mind this, you know, to have that in there, okay. but I don't think it's needed in the preamble because I think it's somewhere else in the charter. Mm -hmm. I think it's work. Everybody keeps referring to that. You know, I, I just think this should be a. We approved I mean, I, it as an insert. No, we did. We, that's what we're. You're right. No, we did, yes. but, but it's not there. He was but, not no, there. But it's it's yeah. what we approved to Rick, go in the new charter. You're right. Rick so you recommends yes. that uh, we put that somewhere else. Maybe that'll be worded better. But um, if this we is put the that, new section one four. Right. If, replacing what was. Right. Okay. And we can leave that and leave this preamble intact if we choose mm -hmm. to do that. Um, does that trouble you at all if we leave one four the way we approved it last week, Rick? That's this. Okay. <coughs> I mean, if it's already there, I don't think we need to say it again. I agree. In the I agree. That's where it's confusing. I think we're on, working on the... Uh, the reason why I express my discomfort over this language is that it seemed to to describe without in adjective form uh, what we think of the powers of the mayor without actually doing anything to deal with individual powers to say he has broad powers doesn't tell me anything unless you then proceed to broaden his powers. Or, I mean, if you take out the word broad and just have if you, power. If you command. say, uh, we, we, uh, we establish this charter and it, it, uh, it grants broad powers to the mayor, that to me sounds like a preamble. It doesn't sound like, um, like operative <coughs> language that you would then proceed to use <coughs> In any particular way, it, as you go through the charter, you're going, you're struggling with, should it be five hundred thousand or two million five hundred thousand? As a lawyer, I clearly understand the difference between those two. You know, frankly, despite the fact that there's a camera behind me, uh, I've always wondered about uh, the idea that we have a strong mayor form of government. When, in fact, when you read three four, looks like we have a strong council form of government to me. So, so I would much, I would be more interested, and maybe it's just me. No, but I would be more interested in uh, a conversation about the powers of the mayor when we get to chapter three and deal or four and deal with the mayor, than than having kind of characterized it without content. But th that's precisely the kind of thing that it seems to me belongs in a preamble, where you say what a wonderful, lovely place this is, and, and you know that it has democracy and, and mayors and, that are strong, and you know, men that are fearless and women who are beautiful. If we adopted language, I, did Where's you get this? <laughs> like this? <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry, we adopt, kid. No, no, I, I appreciate it. Sure it no, we want to give Peter no. credit. For no, preamble. absolutely. It's going to go like down, down in the history away. of Danbury. Peter Bizet, the preamble. Your name will be. I'd be happy to work with Peter on crafting something that drew on the New Britain preamble. 
Bob King's proposal for 1-4 and the language that, that Peter has already given. It's fine. So Let's do it. Come up with something move. that's extraordinary. Second it. Charge. <laughs> Well, Thank you. We're done. Right. We want to add something about the Hat City in there too, though. Okay. So that's that's. You read the Waterbury Charter. Thank you. Right. Right. Oh, Thank you, Rick, for bailing us out again. What Waterbury is. Okay. okay. Wow. We have an abbreviated agenda tonight. We're down to the. Item number five, and the reason we have an abbreviated agenda is we need to come up with a topical agenda for future meetings so that we can try to get some people to come to these meetings with direct solicitation. Peter and Rick. If you look at the suggested <coughs> scope of review pages, you can see that we're down through number three. Number four is municipal elections, and I think we're going to start that discussion at the next meeting. Mr. King? Uh, we talked last time about finalizing this bonding thing before we took on elections because one might have an influence on the other. Okay. And we've been advised that we can we can bring that bonding back up at any point any time that there's not any issue with that. Okay. Shall, shall we make that number one? Well do we want to discuss bonding? Well we don't have it on our agenda for tonight to discuss bonding. Yeah, we can add it. If commissioners, would you like to discuss the bonding piece, or do we want to bring it up at the next meeting and be loaded? I, and I'd rather discuss that at the same time we discuss, uh, you know, whether or not we're going to extend minute office terms. Do it as part of that discussion. Yeah. That's going to be a heck of a I mean, meeting. It'd be pretty easy to, to change that. I mean, we'll vote on it. We already kicked the issue around, I and mean, we're just going to be it's voting on a change in words. Okay. So for the 12th, we will discuss bonding. We will look at the terms of offices and all and the various subsets is, is, that are listed here. That'll be a pretty big meeting, I suspect, because we can't do a preamble in less than 20 minutes. <laughs> and and uh, Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. On, on the terms of offices, obviously the first one would be the term of office of the mayor. We're going to go through each elective office and discuss the terms of each elective office. Is that our... I believe that's... Okay. at least have some thought about that. And now the question is, do we want people to come in and talk to us then, or do we want to get our thoughts out on the table and then figure out whether we want people to come and address us directly about that? Well, people yeah. involved. We, we have already heard from a, a lot of people about mm -hmm. about that at, when we had a public hearing back in December. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess I could, you know, send some emails out to whoever if they want to come back and remind us of what they said. Yeah, I, I, I think as long as we do notice early enough and then if we can set, blast some emails through the city's thing, I'd like to hear from anyone that's interested, certainly. Just well, so, uh, so, 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 but, you know, I mean, to, to blast some emails through the city's system is to get people from the city noticed, but what about other people? Well, when uh, I say city, are we talking council members, obviously the mayor, clerks, right. and... But, but it, there were, we already had our public hearing. I mean, it, it, does that mean the public's going to get another crack at this as well? well? My guess is if it's on the agenda, people are going to come and speak about it. we have it. to have another public okay. hearing, right? Well, we don't need a special public hearing. We just have public session before. No. You must have a public hearing prior to your report, but there's no, uh, there's nothing that prevents you from right. having so, more than So, in effect, we're going we're to post this as soon as we can so that people find out that it's one of the topics of discussion, and I suspect we're going to have a pretty lively public, public session. Just a point. One of the, no, since we were looking at office by office, we haven't really addressed this city clerk and 
treasure issue. Would we want to address that as part of the elections portion? You yes, think, Peter? absolutely. Shall we okay. invite the city clerk? Yes. And the treasurer? Yes. All for May 12th. So as opposed to the organizational area, we would well, put that under, <laughs> under that? Okay, everybody get rested. We might as well. I, yeah, mean, we're gonna I think the idea is let's get all the information. Yeah. Let's get the info. Yeah. Get all the information. So we'll invite the city clerk and treasurer. We don't know. That that that'll be a convenient time for them. Okay. But let's try it. Off for the 12. And then we've got the, um, the following meeting. We would do the organizational review of the entire city. That certainly should work. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> why, don't we, why don't we not calendar that one at this point in time until we get through this election part? Okay. So, we, so, Mr. Chairman, we're going to discuss um, office terms, the number of elected positions, um, at-large council seats, and term limits all at the same time next week or next next month. It sure sounds daunting. Okay. Do you He's starting the discussion? I think that's I think that's clear that it's going to be starting. However, if we're going to ask the city clerk and the city treasurer and the treasurer to come in, I think they they should be the first part of the agenda just so they don't have to sit here all night as we dither so that um, we may not get past those pieces but the fact is that is really the next large part of the agenda that we're going to do included in that will be the bonding section so we'll put that on the agenda for that night whether or not we we get to that and between now and then we've got to figure out who we might be able to hear from for planning and zoning to bring some people in to talk to us and it may it probably won't be the 12th it may be a following meeting so that we can try to tie up that loose end does that make sense mm -hmm. yeah i Paul? kind of think we should devote may to this as opposed to one meeting because it's not something yeah it's going to be may yeah it's i don't think there's any question about that and i just yeah to the extent that people are here i want them to come when they feel like we're going to address it okay so we only have one meeting in May because oh, just Memorial right, May is um, at the end of the oh. month. So we didn't we? We didn't schedule May 19th. No, because we have the 12th, and then the 19th was the following week. So we didn't. Uh, Let's make sure on our notices because I thought. I know. We could double that up. Hmm? Yeah, we just have the 12th. That's right yeah. because we were running into Memorial Day. Oh, uh, okay. That was Memorial Day is the 20th. We talked about having two meetings in there, you and I, moving it to the 19th. Well, you know what we could do? We could establish that as a second meeting if we feel like it after the 12th. Does anybody have any? I just think we're setting ourselves up to fail if we think we're going to address all those things. And we're we're, no, we're going we're, to start them. We're, we're, we're clearly not going to finish. This, we, don't, we, we have yet to finish anything in the meeting that we started it, so I don't, yeah, I don't we've think. Learned. So you but I have no problem jumping in with both feet. Right. Yeah. You wanna you wanna schedule a meeting for the 19th then? Um, let's. We could schedule it at the 12th if people thought they could make it, right? Because I, I I don't. Isn't there a certain um, amount of notice yet? What, what do we need? You, you are required to give advance notice, and uh, and the, as you recall, 24 hours in advance of a special meeting, and the difference. One of the key differences is that you all have to get. Uh, specific notice of those special meetings delivered to your homes. You cannot add items onto the agenda of a special meeting. You have to publish notice of the special meeting in the town clerk's office. Oh, okay. This wouldn't be a special meeting. Could if we planned it uh, now, it wouldn't be a special meeting? For the no, it would still be a special meeting. Yeah, be, because we posted schedule. our calendar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's on your schedule that you posted, you posted in January. In that case, let's see what we do on the 12th. And if we're ready to make some decisions, maybe we'll come back on the 19th. There's no reason not to have special meetings. Yeah. Right. No, we can, you have to we can, through. but we have to have a specific topic. Yes, you do. We can't right. add to the agenda. Yes. And so we can't waive the, the delivery of the notice to the, the house. You waive it if you're here. So we could waive it at our, at our 12th meeting then. No, individuals att attending the special meeting waive it by their presence. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Anything else? So we're going to jump into elections, and we will get together and make some invitations to have some. Oh, yeah. Okay.
When does this commission officially end? I know it was 16 months, but when was the when did the starting gun go off? I believe the end is in January 2009. So our report has to be through and approved by the Common Council by that time? No. No, you have to, you, the statute requires you to file a draft report within the time permitted. And then there's a procedure that follows that. The Common Council has a hearing. To make recommendations back to you, and then you issue your final response. Okay, so that process is not built into the 16 months. That's correct. Okay. Okay, that's good. Yep. So we have a few more months. We were thinking that we got to be ready that's by September ish. No, I, I imagine that you'll want to submit your draft report in, in uh, December. <clears throat> and there's or within the first week of. We want to come in under time and under budget so we're shooting we're more aggressive than that mm -hmm. okay is there anything else anyone would like to discuss tonight uh, I, I, we talked oh there was we talked about public uh, communications were we going to bring that up oh, this time Peter? it's not I, on the agenda i didn't put it on the agenda oh the progress report then do you, do you want me to rewrite this? <laughs> You're getting even. <laughs> you know, I think we should adjourn. You have something else that's a motion. He, uh, that was a thought. He specifically said, I you're think. Right. He said, I thought. It was not a motion. I just want to be clear gotcha. on what you're hoping for in terms of invitations to uh, others regarding planning and zoning. Was it just. Do you want me to call anybody? Yes. Or yes, Any, you do? Yeah, yes. And for what you probably have meeting? more experience than most of us. I'm would. happy to make some calls. I okay. just, can I make a suggestion? I, I think we need an ex. The board, I think, is uncomfortable. Uh, and I don't mean to speak for everybody on the commission, but I think uh, the commission does not understand what each. Whether, what the planning commission does and what the zoning commission does. Got it. Um, and uh, I, I think they want to look at it from the perspective of what they hear and what they decide and why you would go to the zoning commission, why a matter would be before the planning commission. Sure. I'm just trying to understand when you want this to happen. <clears throat> it sounds like you filled your plate for May. Do you want me to use the month of May to try and line up people for that June? Was, yes, that was what I was. What we were, the exec committee was going to meet to try to figure out who should we invite. Yeah. And, and what we're struggling with is because we're not on any of those boards, we don't know who the players are, yeah. who the people are that would have very direct input from very direct experience. My, my intention, if you choose to. Uh, here from a member of the bar will be to call Paul Javer. He's a former assistant corporation counsel. He's soft-spoken and intelligent, and, and I believe uh, you know, has had success uh, when it comes to land use mm -hmm. applications. So that's that's the person I would naturally call. Yep, I work with him still pretty regularly. And we we would appreciate that. Yeah. We're going to then try to get oh, members of the Zoning Commission right. and the Planning Commission just to come in and tell us what they think. Sure. If they all love it or if they all hate it, I, we just kind of want to hear it. But I think what you're hearing from this commission is we're not sure why there's this communications gap between what planning wants and what zoning does. We, we heard it's there. There is one. And we still can't quite figure out why. And if I'm the zoning guy that still wants to do it this way, well, if I'm now the planning and zoning guy, why would it not make sense to invite the chairman of each commission? And we have, yes, done that, I think you've done that. I mean, yeah, yeah. And but I think I think maybe now we need a little more specific invitation to them. And I don't know whether. A bit more forceful, you mean? Well, I don't know whether the mayor's office might invite them to come speak to us. Um, that for June as well. That would be perfect. You want them at the same time uh, that we have? I think abso or somebody else. absolutely. Yeah. That would be great. You want me to try and take care of it? Would you please? I'd be happy. To. You'll be my favorite counsel. <laughs>
that's a big deal. Wow. Uh, <laughs> then I'm definitely getting them here. I think last time we talked about perhaps getting Arnie Finale here because he was on the Zoning Commission. He's now Planning Commission. And he was on when this whole thing right. went through. So he, we talked about he would be perfect because he would have the perspective right. from both sides. And I think we also talked about uh, Ken Keller. Who Ken Keller, I think. Who suggested that? Somebody. I am maybe Dennis. Uh, Ken Keller was on the Planning Commission, I believe, at the time. Okay. okay. And, you know, to get an idea of why yep. they decided that. It should go this way. Yeah. I think that's that would be great. Rick, do you know those those guys? Those yeah, people? let me make those calls and I'll report back to you in May. We'll okay. Okay. Right. Or we and we'll be emailing right. between now and then. That would right. be one meeting. Then we would focus on those people. Is that right? I, I would. Well, I don't know even know that it'll be an entire meeting. But yes, we'd focus on them. They would be the beginning of the agenda, and probably at that point we'd be in the position where we're going to vote on it because it becomes like bonding. At some point, we just run out of questions or perspectives. But that will then tie up that piece of our overall agenda. OK? Does anyone else know people that they, if they, you yeah, think they should be? Ed DeVoe was chairman of the uh, Planning Commission for a long time, a number of years ago. So we'll open it up. Um, Peter has, I think, emailed everybody on both commissions, right? right. Asking and, for and in those who didn't have email addresses, I sent a letter to. Them. Okay, so that we're we're trying to get input and stuff. These guys doing some communications, I'll tell you. Just and, worse. <laughs> anything, anything else anyone would like to bring before the commission? No. I I know Paul James is a very well um, land use person and um, very well thought of here in town. That would be perfect. Yes. So we'll still vote to it. Yes. Good. Okay. That's it. I'll entertain a motion to go home. Go home. Motion to adjourn. Motion's been made. Second. Second. And seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. aye.